Last time, we learned about the introduction of a typhoon. If you haven't watched it yet, you can pause this video and watch it for better understanding of our next video. Locally called Baguio, Typhoon, Hurricane, Cyclones, and Tropical Storms are all giant rotating systems of clouds and winds. The only difference is its naming or how they are called in the different places in the world. The name depends on where in the world it originates. The fact that our country Philippines is compromised of over 7,000 islands leaves the country particularly vulnerable to Baguio or tropical cyclones, strong winds, and storm surge. It was in the year of 2013, November 7, when Super Typhoon Yolanda, or Haiyan, its international name, struck the Philippines. It was the deadliest typhoon in the country's history. The typhoon claimed lives of over 6,000 people. There are more than 1 million homes damaged which displace over 600,000 people. The Philippine Atmospheric, Geophysical, and Astronomical Services Administration, or PAGASA, is the official Philippine agency that forecasts the weather and other climatological conditions that affect the country. It is dedicated to provide flood and typhoon warnings, public weather forecasts and advisories, meteorological, astronomical, climatological, and other specialized information and services primarily for the protection of life and property and in support of economic, productivity, and sustainable development. They monitor and track cyclones, typhoons, and other weather disturbances approaching and forming within the given grids called Philippine Area of Responsibility or PAR. According to them, about 20 tropical cyclones enter the PAR each year. We must be knowledgeable about the tropical cyclones if we want to prevent the loss of more lives. We mentioned a while ago the PAR, or the Philippine Area of Responsibility. This is the smallest and innermost monitoring domain whose boundary is closest to the Philippine Islands. The exact dimension of this domain are the area of the Western North Pacific bounded by imaginary lines connecting the coordinates. Using the latitude and longitude in the table, Let's track the location of the PAR. Latitudes are imaginary lines parallel to the equator. This is the point of distance from left to right. While longitudes are imaginary line from North Pole to South Pole. This is the point of distance from the top to bottom. Let's plot the following points to the map. We have 5 degrees north and 115 degrees east. Next, 15 degrees north and 115 degrees east. 21 degrees north and 120 degrees east. 25 degrees north and 120 degrees east. We have 5 degrees north and 135 degrees east. Next, 25 degrees north and 135 degrees east. Now, let's connect the plotted points. The region within is what we call the Philippine Area of Responsibility. All the typhoons that enter the PAR are monitored by PAGASA. Shown below are the tracks of tropical cyclones that entered the PAR in the past years. The track were plotted by Pagasa. Let's study the map. We have Umpong and Sara.
In that illustration, where did the tropical cyclones form? Is it on land or in the ocean? Very good, in the ocean. What can you say about the temperature of the bodies of water in the vicinity of the Philippines? Is the water warm or cold? Very good, the water is warm. In what direction did the tropical cyclones move? The direction is northwest. Tropical cyclones need water vapor in order to form, but not all parts of the ocean can provide water vapor. Evaporation near the equator is the greatest. The following are the instruments used in tracking the tropical cyclones. Meteorologists use a wide variety of different instruments to measure weather conditions. Number 1 Thermometer. It measures the air temperature. Most thermometers are closed glass tubes containing liquids such as alcohol or mercury. When air around the tube hits the liquid, the liquid expands and moves up the tube. A scale then shows what the actual temperature is. Number 2. Anemometer. It measures wind speed. The cups catch the wind, turning a dial attached to the instrument. The dial shows the wind speed. Number 3. Barometer It measures atmospheric pressure, providing the measurement in millibars. Under most conditions, high and rising pressure indicates sunny weather, while low and failing pressure indicates approaching rain. Number 4. Hygrometer it measures the water vapor content of air or the humidity. It uses human hair from which the oil has been removed by using ether. The hair becomes longer as the relative humidity of the air increases. This change can be made to move an indicator needle which moves over a scale. The graduations of which reads from 0% to 100%. Number 5, Psychrometer. It uses two thermometers to measure relative humidity. One measures the dry bulb temperature and the other measures the wet bulb temperature. Number 6, Raywind Sand. An electronic device used for measuring wind velocity, pressure, temperature, and humidity aloft. It is also attached to a balloon, and as it rises through the atmosphere, it makes the required measurements. Number 7. Weather Surveillance Radar It is a long-range type which detects and tracks typhoons and cloud masses at distance of 400 kilometers or less. This radar has a rotating antenna disc preferably mounted on top of a building free from any physical obstruction. Radio energy emitted by the transmitter and focused by the antenna shoots outward through the atmosphere in a narrow beam. The radar is a useful tool in tracking and monitoring tropical cyclones. I have here Pagasa's revised storm warning system. Signal number 1. Winds of 30 to 60 km per hour in the next 24 hours. Signal number 2. Winds of 61 to 120 km per hour in the next 24 hours. Signal number 3. Winds of 121 to 170 km per hour in the next 18 hours. Signal number 4. Winds of 171 to 220 km per hour in the next 12 hours. And signal number 5. Winds of more than 220 km per hour in the next 12 hours. <music>